best seat in the house. It really is. You know, Michael Jr., we were actually talking before. You actually discovered your comedic talent, what, when a piece of film broke? Tell me about that. You know, yeah, I was, uh, I'm from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I was watching a, uh, with me and my friends were at a, a movie theater, <laughs> and we were watching the, the movie, and all of a sudden the screen just, just the movie stopped right in the middle, and then the, the house lights came on, and my, my friend, this German exchange student, he said to me, I dare you go tell a joke. <laughs> like, that's the best German I got. I <laughs> anyway. That was German? Yeah, that was German or Mexican. I don't know. Anyway, um, he dared me to go tell a joke. And at the time, you know, I'm like 18 years old. If you dare me to do anything, I'm going to do it. That's right. So I went up there and I told this joke. Now, at the age of 14, I decided to, to not use any foul language and stop cursing completely. Sure. I didn't know anything about Jesus at this time. It was just, a, it was just we just decided that, me and a friend. Yeah. So I went up there and I, I knew this joke. It was a dirty joke. And I'd already cleaned it up in my mind. I went up there and I told this joke. And um, all these people laughed and and they enjoyed it, and I felt a high for the first time ever in my life. I've mm -hmm. never done any drugs or anything like that, but I felt this sensation. Then I went and sat down, and these uh, security comes running in mm -hmm. to kick me out. Mm -hmm. They were looking for me, and then this, this lady, <laughs> this, this white lady who I didn't even know, stood up and said, if you kick that young man out, I want my money back. Yeah, and wow. Then, and then these uh, biker dudes with long hair and tattoos said the same thing. Yeah. And then these black people, I was like, wow, all I did was give them a little part of me and they gave me all this love mm. in return. So it was like huge. And in retrospect, I can clearly see that was God saying, I have something for you to do. Quickly, how did you come to the Lord? Wh what really? What? Re no. um, yeah, yeah, Jesus. Uh, you know what? I had a manager. Um, I did a show. George Wallace, who you've had on the show before. Sure. Uh, George Wallace uh, <clears throat> saw me in New York City and, um, and he said to me, wow, you're, you're very funny. You don't why don't you curse? And I was like, I don't know. What if my grandmother walk in? I, said, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't have any, right. right? So, and then uh, he asked me to do a show. He said, you're so funny. I want you to do a show with me and my best friend. His best friend was Jerry Seinfeld. Wow. So he took me, me, him, and Jerry went and did the show. I had a show I ripped. It was a phenomenal show. After, I got like two standing ovations. Afterwards, um, my manager walks up to me and says, you want to go to church? Mm -hmm. I was like, church? You see what just happened? What? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, two yeah. stand ovations. Am I sick? What do I gotta go to church? Because I didn't know. I thought I thought church was because I always see the testimonies. People be like, I almost died. Then I found Jesus. I was like, Well, you was gonna meet the other dude if you didn't. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> like I didn't know. I didn't know the right. That's what I thought. That's yeah. all I saw. Yeah. So, and then he invites me to go to this. Uh, and then his fiance says, you want to go to church with us? His fiance was beautiful. Yeah. At this point, I didn't even know pretty people went to church. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. I didn't even know because when I was seven years old, when I was seven, all I saw was them. I didn't know. Yeah. So I went to this church. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hey, your hair over here, but you over. I don't know what. Anyway, so it was really scary. And then um, I go to this church, Christian Culture Center, Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. Woo! A.R. Bernard, man. Oh, yeah. Bringing it. Guy I mean, this dude is talking phenomenal. about Jesus. And that's all he doing, he talking, he not screaming, he not yelling, he don't got no perm, he just talking <laughs> about, and, and he just talking, and then he did an altar call. Yeah. And he said, he said, if you want to give Jesus into your life, just come on down. And I wanted to go down, but I said, no, I'm not going, I'm not going to go. I wouldn't, because I, I, I said, I got to read the pamphlet first. I don't know what this is about. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> know. That's right. You so have I, the instruction manual. So I told myself I was going to read the whole Bible before I went to the altar call. So I, I'm reading the whole <laughs> Bible. I got the part about the, the job, which was really confusing, right? And I kept... <laughs> Right. And I kept reading. I kept reading and I kept going to church. I kept yeah. reading and I kept going to church. Then I got to the part in Matthew yeah. where it said that Jesus Christ died for me. Right. I'm 27 years old at this point. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that Jesus died for me until I read it right there. Mm -hmm. I'd been to church. I seen this stuff on TV, but none of it was clear enough for me to receive it until I read it myself wow. right there. Wow. 27 years old. And then I read it. I didn't even know he died. Then I turned to Mark and he died again. I was like, what? <laughs> going on? I don't know. Then he, <laughs> then he died in Luke and John. I was like, when are they going to learn? Friday what are they doing? Man. Right? Then I get the revelations. Gonna learn? I'm like, it was, it was confused. I was, they, should, they should let you know what's going on. Then I got the revelations. I got all scared. I'm flipping off fast. And then when I finally go to church on a Sunday after I'm done reading the Bible, I run up to the altar like during the announcements. I was like, hey, is Jesus here now? <laughs> Do I got to wait to the end? Do I got to wait? And, and Dr. McNair has made it so clear. I understand now that God is like a navigational device in your car. Amen. If it says go 10 blocks and turn left, and you go 10 blocks and turn right, he doesn't abandon what you need to do. Right. He just recalculates what you need to do to get to where you're supposed to be Amen. based upon where you are. Amen. Uh, Only Amen. problem is, is if we keep making the wrong turns, if we keep making the wrong turns, the road conditions are going to be different, and, and we're running out of time. Amen. So it's awesome.